My career path was set when I saw and grabbed a keel green snake when I was in the first grade. My interest soon expanded to other reptiles and later to amphibians and other animals. Acoustic communication in frogs was the centerpiece of my research career, but I never lost my fascination for snakes and especially the New World pit vipers. The majority in this video were filmed in the wild, but others were in zoos or private collections where all snakes were legally collected and held. Pit vipers have a loyal pit located between the eye and nostril on both sides of the head. This organ is an exquisitely sensitive heat detector used by many pit vipers to detect their warm-blooded prey. At the species level, the usual controversy is whether a taxon is a full species or some kind of subspecies. The irony is that these days the common name is often more stable and standardized than the scientific ones because those are changing all the time and are disagreed about. So here are two examples. The copperheads show only minor geographic variation in color patterns. They interbreed with the broad-banded copperhead in a relatively wide north-south zone from Kansas to Texas. Some authorities thus consider it a subspecies, and I agree. Other authorities cite molecular as well as color pattern differences to support its status as a full species. The Florida cottonmouth is another questionable species. Although I am using names from recent field guides, an asterisk indicates that the full species designation is controversial. In cottonmouth threat displays, it's easy to see how the long fangs of many pit vipers become erect when the mouth is opened after having been folded against the roof of the closed mouth. Cantiles are relatives of copperheads and cottonmouths. Taylor's cantile is a rare and endangered species found in a small area in northeastern Mexico. The common cantile has a large distribution in Mexico and Central America as far as south as Honduras. Pygmy and Massasauga rattlesnakes, genus Cisturus, are smaller than most rattlesnakes and have nine large head scales. The rest of the rattlesnakes, genus Crotalus, usually have many small scales on the top of their heads, even if they have a few larger ones, and there are other more subtle anatomical differences. The pygmy rattlesnake is found in the southeastern U.S. Massasaugas occur in southern Ontario, the northeastern and midwestern states, and as far west as eastern Arizona. The timber rattlesnake is the most widespread rattlesnake in the eastern United States. A subspecies, the canebrake rattlesnake, is recognized by some authorities and is found in the southern part of the range. The eastern diamondback is the largest of the rattlesnakes, and they are relatively common in pine flatwoods and sand hills in the southeast. They and many other animals use the burrows of gopher tortoises where their ranges overlap. The greatest diversity of rattlesnakes occurs in the western U.S. and Mexico. Some groupings are based on shared characteristics, including molecular ones, but most higher taxonomy is messy 
and lacks formal names above the species level. The western diamondback is a relatively abundant species that is widespread in terms of distribution and habitat in both the U.S. and Mexico. It, the eastern diamondback, red diamondback, and two island endemics are members of the diamondback species group. Santa Catalina is the name of a small island in the Gulf of Baja, California, where a rattlesnake with the same name occurs. It is notable because it lacks a fully formed rattle. You can see just a few segments and the button at the end of the tail. The Mojave rattlesnake is a desert species found in Arizona, California, and New Mexico, and Mexico. Its range overlaps broadly with the western diamondback and they are often confused. Its relationship with other groups is unclear, and it hybridizes to some extent with western prairie and Arizona black rattlesnake in some localities. The prairie rattlesnake is widely distributed, ranging from southern Canada to extreme northern Mexico. There are two flavors in Arizona. The prairie or green rattlesnake is larger than the Hopi rattlesnake. The Arizona black rattlesnake is now considered to be a full species after being classified as a subspecies of the prairie rattlesnake and later as a member of the western rattlesnake group. It is found exclusively in Arizona and extreme western New Mexico. As indicated by its common name, Grand Canyon rattlesnake has a limited distribution. It is usually considered a subspecies in the western rattlesnake group, which includes the midget faded, northern and southern Pacific, and Great Basin rattlesnakes. The last two species are considered subspecies by some authorities and full species by others. The speckled rattlesnake group consists of two species, the Panamint and southwestern speckled rattlesnakes. The speckled rattlesnake's colors are highly variable. Ones found in or near the Grand Canyon with an orange or reddish cast are often mistaken for Grand Canyon rattlers. The tiger rattlesnake, a close relative of the speckle rattlesnake, has a head size that is distinctly smaller relative to its body size. This species occurs in a wide variety of arid habitats. The western blacktails in southeastern Arizona are common generally placid, and especially handsome creatures. Recently, the eastern subspecies has been recognized as a full species.
The sidewinder is primarily a desert species that gets its common name from its mode of locomotion. Their bodies usually touch the ground in only two places at a time when sidewinding. Sidewinders are related to tiger and Baja California rattlers. In Arizona, the twin-spotted rattlesnake is a rock-loving, high-elevation species found in just four mountain ranges. It's a protected species in the U.S., but extensively distributed in Mexico. The richness rattlesnakes occurs at both high elevations and at lower elevations in wooded canyons in southeastern Arizona. It is also a protected species in the U.S. and ranges extensively into Mexico. Young ridge-nosed rattlesnakes may stay together for some days just after birth, accompanied by their mother. Rock rattlesnakes occur from southern Arizona to Texas and have a large distribution in Mexico. They are found in both high and lower elevation localities. At least 40 species of rattlesnakes occur in Mexico, and many of these are endemic. Some species are wide-ranging, and others have very limited distributions. The largest ones are the Mexican West Coast, Middle American, and Neotropical rattlesnakes. The Neotropical rattlesnake is found in southern Mexico, but its center of distribution is South America, where it occurs as far south as Argentina. The Aruba Island rattlesnake is a highly endangered species. Aruba Island lies off the coast of Venezuela in the Caribbean Sea. The taxonomy of small, high-elevation Mexican rattlesnakes is in flux. For example, when I photographed this western dusky rattlesnake, Crotalus armstrongi, near Guadalajara in 2004, it was called the Mexican dusky, Crotalus triceriata. Based on newer molecular and other data, this name now refers to a species further to the east, which is considered more closely related to the Queretaro dusky rattlesnake, Crotalus aquilus, and to a subspecies of the rock rattlesnake, Crotalus lepidus marulus. Another beautiful and rare high elevation species is the cross banded rattlesnake, Crotalus transversus, which is closely related to the twin spotted rattlesnake. The Baja California rattlesnake is endemic to that peninsula and is related to sidewinders. One exceptionally beautiful Mexican endemic is the lance-headed rattlesnake, with a limited distribution in central Mexico. The Mexican pygmy rattlesnake occurs in the highlands of the southeastern part of the Mexican plateau. It was formally classified in the genus Cistrurus. The fertile lance is widespread in southern Mexico and Central America. They are very nervous snakes, and they and their relatives further south are the source of many serious bites. The one I saw and photographed in Costa Rica stood its ground, but did not strike, probably because I didn't get too close. Here are more images and footage of the so-called lance-headed vipers in the genus Bothrops. The taxonomy of the ones I saw in Bolivia is still not well resolved.
Dunn's hognose viper is confined to the southern Mexican states of Oaxaca and Chiapas. It's a ground-dwelling forest species. Rowley's palm pit viper is also restricted to a small area in Oaxaca and Chiapas states. It lives in cloud forest and like the eyelash viper is highly arboreal. Although relatively small and slender, both species have strong venom and bites tend to be on the upper body parts. They are not aggressive, but of course dangerous because they are hard to detect before coming into contact with them. The eyelash viper is wide-ranging in Central America and is notable for its striking variety of color patterns. Bushmasters are the largest vipers. Unlike all other vipers, they lay eggs rather than bearing live young. My experience with filming them in Bolivia is that they are relatively placid. I consider them one of the most stunning of all snakes.